we're going to look at the maximum ST flow problem. The problem is specified as follows. We are given a digraph G, such that it has two distinguished nodes, S and T, an arc capacity given by U of E for each arc E. An arc capacity is either a non-negative real number or infinity. Here, the numbers beside the arcs are the arc capacities. And the way to think about an arc with infinite capacity is to think of it as an arc without any capacity. But in practice, infinity can be replaced by a very large constant. We're interested in ST flows. An ST flow is a vector x with entries indexed by the arcs, satisfying the following. For each arc, the flow value on that arc is at least 0, and at most the arc capacity. And it has to satisfy what is known as flow conservation. Let's unpack the notation here. So delta plus of v denotes the set of arcs that have v as the tail. And delta minus of v denotes the set of arcs that have v as the head. So if we look at the node A, delta plus of A will consist of the arcs AB and the AC. And delta minus of A will just contain the arc SA. Here, x of delta plus of v means we sum up the components of x indexed by the elements in delta plus of v. In plain English, we're adding up all the flow values on arcs that have v as tail. And we subtract the sum of the flow values on arcs that have v as head. So this is saying the total flow out of a node minus the total flow into a node has to be zero. And the maximum ST flow problem is to find an ST flow that maximizes the net flow out of the node S, which is called the value of the ST flow. Clearly, this is a linear programming problem, and there's no difficulty solving such a problem. But because this problem has a combinatorial structure, there might be specialized algorithms that have better performance than a generic linear programming algorithm. And we're going to look at the Ford Focusing Augmenting Path algorithm. So we have the same ST network here, and we also have an ST flow given by the numbers in red. And it's easy to check that this is ST flow. At nodes A, B, and C, the flow conservation constraints are satisfied. The Ford Focusing algorithm has a key ingredient: is to look for what is known as an augmenting path. We say that an ST path P is an augmenting path if the flow value on every backward arc is positive and the flow value on every forward arc is not a capacity. So here is an example of an augmenting path. So we start from S and go to C and then go to A and then go to B and go to T. SC is going to be a forward arc and we can see that the flow value is less than the capacity. The arc AC is a backward arc and the flow value is positive. On the arcs AB and BT, we have flow values that are less than the capacity. So this is indeed an augmenting path. Once we have identified an augmenting path, we can obtain an ST flow with larger flow value. So what we do is, on every forward arc, we increase by the same value. And on every backward arc, we decrease by that same value. And the increase we take will be as large as possible so that we still end up with an ST flow. And in this case, we can increase by 1. So if we increase by 1, this will become 1. This will become 0 because it's a backward arc. Remember that we are decreasing the flow value on every backward arc. And this will be 1. And this will be 2. Notice that this modification does not violate the flow constraints. And what we have now here is a new ST flow, its value, which is given by the net flow out of S, is 2. Previously, our flow had value 1. There's a systematic way of finding augmenting paths. And the way to do it is to form what is known as the auxiliary digraph. So this digraph has the same node set. 
and we're going to add an arc from u to v when either uv is an original arc and the flow value is less than capacity, or if vu is an original arc and the flow value is positive. So we're going to form this auxiliary digraph with respect to the original flow values. So we're going to have an arc from S to A because S A is an arc and the flow value is less than capacity. But the flow value is also positive, so we have to add the arc A S. Now originally, A B is an arc with flow value 0, which is less than capacity, so we have an arc here. There's no arc going from B to A with respect to the original flow value because it is 0. And if we add in all the arcs, we'll get this. And if we now look for a director ST path in this auxiliary digraph, we'll be able to identify an augmenting path in the original network. And clearly, this is a directed ST path, and it corresponds to the augmenting path that we have found. So the fourth focus on augmenting path algorithm is simply keep finding augmenting path, and each time an augmenting path is found, we increase the value of the ST flow along the path as much as possible until we cannot do this anymore. And if the finite arc capacities are rational numbers, this algorithm will terminate. It is possible to remove the rational capacity assumption by simply finding the shortest path in the auxiliary digraph every time. So in this case, we would take this path instead of the blue ST path because this is the shortest path. So the correctness of the algorithm hinges on the following theorem. An ST flow is of maximum value if and only if there's no augmenting path. So we have already seen that if there's an augmenting path, then the ST flow is not of maximum value. So the difficult direction is to prove that if there's no augmenting path, then the ST flow is of maximum value. And in the next video, we're going to see why that's the case. To finish, let's note the following. If the finite arc capacities are integral, then every augmentation step will change the flow values on the arcs by an integer. And so if a maximum ST flow exists, then we are going to end up with a maximum ST flow that has only integer entries. And this is an important property when we consider applications that require answers in integers.